right now, but the fact that they're 2 0 versus 1 0, we could have a 2 1 2 0 at the end of this. We could see Pain game at the top of the league. Yeah, they, there is a fair bit staking on this. Just for those of you who don't know the format of this tournament here, there's five international teams. Four of them actually move into seeding, so only one team will get eliminated from the group stage. A lot of this whole stage, at least for the top teams, maybe even for Immunity and Pain, if we can call them the top teams now, is about feeling out their competition, getting settled on this kind of international stage so they can really try to qualify full force tomorrow when the elimination games really start. So, bans have begun. It is going to be Kennen and Shen being taken away by Immunity and Lee Sin, actually. Thresh and Zack being removed by Pain Gaming. They don't want to see that Zack from Swiper this time around. And Ezreal actually banned out from Pain Gaming. That's interesting because yes. Immunity didn't play it last time. They, they, they favor Twitch more. Exactly. They're much better on Twitch. They're, if they're banning anything here, they're trying to ban a mid lane Ezreal from Heavens. I feel like, but it, it's it's even stranger because BRTT played Ezreal in the last game. That almost feels like an error in scouting, but there might be something that we don't know these teams do. Well, Jarvan's going to get picked in there, I believe. Was he playing in the Jarvan in the last game? Is this a straight counter pick? No. I'm trying to think who there was definitely Jarvan. Jarvan. It was Gaming Gear, was it? Yeah, Gaming Gear was definitely on Jarvan for the last team because in the last game. Pain played, they had Malphite knocked ah, Yes, of course. And they were diving really strong with that, whereas the last team that Immunity played, they had the combo there uh, with Elise and Zach. So obviously, neither of these combinations come in, or that, that combination is not happening for them, whereas the Malphite Nocturne could still potentially happen for Pain. A lot of discussions for Pain Gaming here, making sure they get these bans correct, of course. But which way will they go? Zyra was played by Rosie in the last match, so that would be taking it away smart. from him. Whether it's exactly a counter pick, who knows? The fact that he played Annie very successfully in game one, but Malphite is going to get locked in there. They played that in game one. I think both of these picks are very smart for Pain because A, they're breaking up the Zyra Twitch synergy that um, Immunity has already built up. Oh, that's, that's good. You and, also, and also, the Malphite is in case Immunity still wants Twitch, Malphite is very good against him. And I can tell you the European LCS teams have been having fun with the Brazilians as well. A little bit of there fun. is a Mordekaiser drawn on the board in the player support room with hu 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 on it. And uh, so the Brazilians have been in there the whole week. They've had to uh, put up with the humor, which I'm sure they're pretty <laughs> the probably, humor. They're probably pretty bored of right by yeah. right now, I would talking. But Lissandra being locked in there. So that's going to be Lissandra in the top lane. They played it in game one, remember, on top that top. Lane. And Vayne being selected. So Vayne Mechanics this time will be coming out from Radia. Yeah. I mean, Radier, first player to hit Challenger over on the Oceanic server versus Kami, the mid laner for Pain, who is the number one challenger on the Brazilian <laughs> servers as well. There's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of back and forth as those guys almost try to kind of carry the game against each other. Yeah, the, uh, the Brazilians actually selected more to guys this time around, taking it in Ooh. turns with them. So Vi getting selected. So we're going to see Vi probably in the jungle, I would suspect. We've seen that a number of times from the likes of Aranea in the European mm. LCS, but Caitlyn also being locked in as their AD carry. I'm noticing a pattern here from Payne. They really want to kill AD carries. <laughs> they had Malphite Nocturne last time which actually can't necessarily lock onto Vayne, but if they bring the Vi, there's no way that that Unstoppable Force isn't gotten. You're really amused by this Mordekaiser. It's more the team of being selected, which actually is legitimate for Rosie, so I'm waiting to see whether it gets picked this time. That's why I, that's why I have this huge sloppy grin on my face right now. It's legitimate-ish. I feel, I don't know how. Uh, no, I don't think so. This is this is not the time to start pulling out no. some uh, interesting picks. He might pick picks. that Swain, though. Mm. Nah, come on. He, Heavens has actually played a Swain in the past that was very effective. He played it, I believe, in the qualifier game yeah, there we go. Uh, when they made it in. So it is going to get locked, locked in. So yeah, Sona Swain will be locked in. So Swain in that mid lane. That's we really believe smart. in the mid lane, of course. That's a champion we don't see a great deal of. No, and it's, it's very difficult to fit into a team because a lot of times if you just get enough burst damage on him at the start, he's gone. And Swain wants so many different items that he's very hard to kind of get to that point. But the reason this is so smart right now is because the Malphite and the Vi picks that have happened from Pain already are just going for Vayne. So there's a very good chance that Swain will be able to sit in fights and just kind of drain tank and dominate the whole team. Oh, it looks like Oriana is going to get locked in. I'm getting a little excited for Mausaha may come out there. <laughs> we have seen it in the Korean OGN a little bit uh, in the first few weeks of it, but unfortunately it didn't work out very well in that. So 
no surprising, he didn't get selected. Oriana will, and that makes it for some interesting comps. You've got the ball delivery yeah. system with the Malphite Oriana. These are both very unique team compositions. We were saying that, yes, these teams don't necessarily have, like, their own super-defined style, and they're going to be a mix of a bunch of things, but who plays Swain, for one? Mm. And then, obviously, the Malphite Vi combination seems like a very pain thing that they do where they just love to channel onto one target and take it down. I don't know if that's going to work against this immunity team composition, though, because they've built so many threats into their lineups thus far. Well, I mean, you could put the defensive ball on Ariana or Vi. Either way, they're going to be piling through to your back line. They're going. Doing and there's this one damage, target. And they're going to land it. There's one target that's going to die. One target is definitely going to die. We'll see who it is, though, of course. So what do we make of this? We've seen immunity. They've looked very strong so far. We've seen pain pick up a victory as well. Where's your money? Right now, if I had to, and I, I hate making predictions. I know you games, do, I know you do. That's I why always, I just put I you on the spot. It. I don't think you should do that anymore. Immunity definitely has a bit of an edge here because they have too many threats and there's such a single target focus from Payne's team. And unless Payne can catch them off guard uh, and not necessarily have those big team fights before they have a big lead, I think Immunity takes this one. Well, they have the record so far and they have looked very good. If you just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be Pain Gaming up against Immunity. Immunity will be starting out as the blue team. You can see them on the right side of the stage and Pain Gaming on the left side. You can see the champions they have locked in. It is right behind us. Yeah. And of course, we are here at Gamescom. Day one, it's press day, game one, day one, but it's definitely gets busier and busier I every time I come here. There so were this many press. I, I had no idea this many press existed in the world, let alone in the gaming industry. You learn something every day. You do, you do. So we are live, ladies and gentlemen. And it's going to be Immunity as the blue team, as I mentioned. And you can see on your screen, Pain Gaming. So will we see any level one play? Of course, I would suggest that Immunity probably have the stronger level one. But of course, Grasping Roots can never be ruled out from Azira at level one. Yeah, I'd always be scared going into a team that has a Zyra if you're trying to invade level one. Because one of those things lands and your team is pretty much going to get wiped out. But speaking of things to notice every day, I haven't seen this combo pulled off that frequently, but it's really cool. The Vi and Caitlyn, Caitlyn Piltover combination, if they both alt the same target, uh, if they sync the timing right, no one can block the Caitlyn bullet. Because Vi goes in a straight line to a target and knocks people aside, so that the ace in the hole would go straight through. That's another reason that right now Payne can pick out one guy and guarantee that it dies. That would have to be a pretty specific it combo. It looks amazing. There's actually a, a secret VO line when they both uh, hit the same target that oh. they say to each other. Ah, yeah. ah, little Riot secrets coming out here. So the ward placements, they got put down pretty heavily actually in the jungle of Immunity. Immunity, meanwhile, only putting the one down themselves, but they are going to be all passing over the ward of Pain, and Pain actually not backing off completely here. They realize that they have just spotted them, so they're going to try and protect their own jungle, and may actually look at going for an invade. Where are they going to be hmm. hovering around here? They seem rather indecisive. This is a very generic opening as far as these teams are concerned. They both just invaded each other's red buffs, put some wards down, and then now they're deciding where to go from there. And it is going to be the blue buff. We do see Rosie was passing by and actually looking to maybe try and get a little poker rash. Just get the vision on there. Has to be careful. So he does take that blue buff, gets a good vision of it. And Alicia will be taking the blue buff of his own. So mirrored actually junglers right now. So all those ward placements by Pain, they obviously know that the blue buff has been taken. Yeah, and he forced the smite, which is the big thing that Sona was able to pull off there, which actually means Alicia's jungle is going to be a little bit faster than Surtees and might give him a slight edge with the early ganks. And since he's got the smite for the red buff here, he's going to have a much higher th health threshold throughout the jungle than Surtees is going to be able to do, since Surtees has to take down his buff here without smite. So Alicia actually passed all of the mini camps. So he literally went blue buff yeah, straight to rush level and three. he's going for a gank. He rushed level three, as a lot of these people do, and he wants to get in and maybe turn the tides of this 2v2 lane, but the sinking is totally off on this. As you can see, Immunity has already pushed up the lane. There's no way a Jarvan gank would work at that point, which is why Alicia has just decided to go back to the jungle. And I guess that's mainly down to the fact that Caitlyn Zyra lane would generally push a Sona Vayne, but Vayne think they would seems early. to have done a pretty good job. Yeah, they're just... If Radier honestly, is getting uh, fed the farm, by BRTT and the Caitlyn is not harassing him off early. Even if they planned this quick level 3 Jarwin, maybe help us gank bottom, 
you're going to take it anyway, because at the end of the day, all you want to be able to do with Vayne against Caitlyn early on is keep CS even. And since they've done that, everything worked out great. So they see the Wraiths being taken away. They have the ping down on Alicia. They know exactly his path. Let's look at this mid lane, of course. Heavens is on Swain, and he's up against an Oriana. It's not a lane we see too often. And obviously, no. Swain's not a champion we see too often at all. And this will be not the smoothest laning phase uh, for Heavens. Oh, actually, as Serti and Alicia fight a little bit in the top, no one's helping out, though. No one's helping out. That's a battle for double buffs as well. And Heavens actually was making a move there, but Kami immediately tries to come across. Flash force from Kami. That was also the flash from Alicia, so double summon has burned. Really trying to help Heavens early on in that lane by burning the flash before the gank even happened. Because as soon as Alicia telegraphs that, he only has one goal there. It's burn the flash for Kami because he's going to return later, which already puts Kami in a defensive position, which should allow Heavens to farm a bit. Speaking of farming, Venom's doing a very good job of keeping up with Swiper in that top lane. I would have thought Lissandra would have the better of Venom, but as it is, he is obviously pushing slightly ahead in farm, but Venom's doing a very good job of keeping up. Yeah, this Malphite, at least early on, is doing good work. He needs to build a bit of magic resist, otherwise Swiper's gonna start taking advantage of him a bit. And Lissandra is one of those casters who can actually go top lane. Not super long spell ranges, but they're long enough that she can abuse melee champions, which is what Venon is running right now. venon has got to be very careful not to get taken advantage of in that lane. Radio having to tumble out of the plants of Espion there down the bottom lane. Well, Venon doing a good job, but look at this. Alicia has come back. This time there is a ward, though, from Pain Gaming. They're going to see him coming. He's going back. He's in the tri bush, and it's not going to work. And I want to talk a little bit about this Caitlyn Zyra synergy, how if you compare AD carry and support, they both have the longest auto attack range of the common ones seen. Caitlyn at 650, way longer than Vayne here at 550. And then Zara actually has a 575 and a really nice auto attack animation, so it's easy to harass with. It makes it incredibly difficult to trade auto attacks with that lane, no matter what you're doing. And that's one of the reasons people like picking that lane. Well, Alicia in the bush waiting for this, but Surtee's going to walk straight up behind him and going to face check straight in there. Kami's close enough to be able to maybe try and create something here. We are to see a solid Ooh. battery catching on towards him, Sir T doing damage. Very nice jump over the wall there by Sir T with his Vault Breaker just hitting him for that first blood bonus. Really good work there by Sir T. Yeah, it wasn't a solid battery because he's not hit level six yet. <laughs> no. So nevertheless, solid batteries for later. Yeah, they're going to do that on. Uh, I guess Radier will be the focus of target, but nevertheless, it's working well. Look at the CS down in this bottom lane, though. We talked about it. Radier did have a little bit of advantage, but as expected, BRT has gained some of the ground back and started to try and punish out that lane, but it's too late, maybe. Radier has kept up. He's weathered the storm. He's gone over the early levels of danger levels, effectively, from BRT and actually has kept ahead in terms of farm. Yeah, I would say that Radier have Radier and, and Rosie have came out ahead in that lane over BRTT and Espeon simply because the matchup was not in their favor. Once they buy items is when we're going to see it. But actually right now, even though they have came out ahead, mid, they're still not ahead. Mid on towards Heavens. Is it going to be enough to lock him oh, down on the turret? He will. He gets the return kill though with the turret. Managed to lock him up there, but the Vault Breaker working wonders. And so T finding his goal again. I think that's okay for Heavens, all said and done. Because he got the kill back, no one's going to be spiraling ahead of him. And it, that kill actually gave him the gold he needed to pick up that catalyst as well as boots, which will give him a bit of a mobility advantage there over Kami and Mid. So this top lane, 50 CS currently to Swiper. He's kept hold of that lead he's had over then on, on Malphite. But Malphite isn't really interested in a straight-up duel here. He just wants to keep his farm going. And it's a matter of who will be the most effective when they do join this. Ben has already used that teleport that Grady is continuing to put pressure on BRT, but he's just going to back away. And it's strange that Venon is actually... Looks like he's going for a haunting, guys. Instead of going for maybe a Chalice of Harmony or something to reduce some of the damage in that lane. He might be going for that Magic Pen Malphite, which means he doesn't care about the lane necessarily, but is going to be looking to roam and make plays, which has got to be the case since he's going teleport anyway. Well, Espion managed to land the power Ooh. cord. Having to burn the flash there because he did have the silver roll bolts on him there. BRT going very low. Espion, he got the grasping roots on Radier, but he just didn't care. He just carried on attacking. Yeah, that was not a good trade whatsoever. And we would mentioned that really... Raider was going to have to wait until he picked up some items to go after BRTT, but that was not the case because Sona and Vayne just synced up better and were able to out-trade. So back in his top lane, we do see, obviously, 
The double Doran's rings were picked up by Swiper, so he hasn't really built up towards an item yet. Has got those simple mm. boots in there. Keeping an eye on Heavens, of course. Has got that blue buff on him now. We do have Sir T coming close. And Vi's level 6 gank is so deadly, but on a long cooldown. Wherever he decides to use this has a fairly high chance of getting a kill. And so that'll tell us who they really care about getting kills on. Right on top of a ward, though, Heavens is dangerously trying to bait this gank out and wasting Sir T's time very well. Yeah, he's doing a very good job of that. But BRT has returned to lane, got himself rushed in towards that BF sword, wants to go for that Bloodthirster early on. Meanwhile, Radier, he's of course going towards Blade of the Rune King, got himself that build draw to cut this already built and keeping up very well in this farm, as we pointed out many times in this bottom lane. The mid lane, the farm is actually falling towards Kami, but Sir T is looking for more kills. Yeah, Sir T trying to get that level 6 gank off, and you can tell Alicia is just trying to mirror him right now and counter gank. Vi's ganks tend to overextend her a little bit if you see them coming mm. on account of she just turns herself into, you know, the enemy target and just goes for it. So it's it's actually quite counter gankable, and that's what Alicia is trying to do. When it's it's kind of like the the classic Maokai, when you do the twisted advance, they flash into the turret and you think, mm -hmm. oh god. Uh oh, <laughs> what have I done? I'm going a bit too deep here. Rosie might get caught out though. You can see the pallets coming across. Stranglethorn should be enough. Flashes out with a oh. crescendo, but Surti gets in with the assault and battery. BRT picks up the kill. Now they're going to try and turn their attention towards Alicia, who has to flash away as well. And that was cutting it a little too close because you could tell Immunity was trying to come in for the counter gank, but the sheer power of the Vi came in. One of the reasons that gank worked is when she She's assaulted battering. The things that are in her way, she just knocks aside. And it turned out that as Jarvan was trying to jump in with his flag toss, he hit Vi and ended up interrupting himself on the jump. He gets bounced back. That may well actually give pain the dragon. There's not really going to be any defense from immunity, so dragon will be taken. That's going to stretch pain gaming's goal lead to around about 2,000. Not a bad start. Ten and a half minutes gone. Specifically because Immunity is 2-0 and and quite honestly looked like the best team in this international wildcard tournament right before this game. But the early ganks from Vi, specifically Sir T, have been very strong. He needs to make sure to keep putting his presence on this game so they don't let Immunity kind of outfarm and get to that strong team fight phase. And just like that, Vinon, because that Dragon was picked up, uses the teleport to go back in that top lane, keeps himself in the lane. Like you mentioned, he went for that whole team, guys. Meanwhile, Swiper actually going defensive, which is a little... <laughs> Interesting for me, considering the lane he's in. So one reason he could go for the Negatron Cloak here is because Venon has went for the Magic Penetration, and if you're just in a lane situation, Magic Resist does outscale Magic Pen. If he's thinking about actually fighting Venon right now, it will give him defensive immunity from what Venon's trying to do, and will allow him to continue to farm. So we'll see how that develops. He has got himself a decent farming gap. We should also mention that Kami is pulling ahead of Heavens in that mid lane. He's got himself around about 20 CS gap right now built up. So he's doing a good job on Ariana Heavens. Going with that Swain pick, an unusual pick. Maybe he's just done it purely for the sake of it or whether he simply enjoys playing different champions. Nevertheless, doesn't always pick into what the team may need. Well, here's the thing. In this case, I think the Swain is exactly what they need. And it's because of this team fight team that Immunity's been able to put together versus even though there is an Orianna and a Malphite, the assassination team almost that Pain has been able to put in. Because as soon as as soon as Ray Deer picked that vein in champion select, Pain decided they wanted to kill him. And that's what almost every pick that Pain has was towards. And since and that's at the point where Heavens picked the Swain. So if they don't focus down Swain and he avoids incidental damage, his Swain will be able to carry a lot of these team fights. He just needs the farm, and Amiri needs to not fall behind before they can get that to happen. Well, Sir T using our Vault Breaker to get over the wall, trying to get himself in towards that lower bush. Instead, was spotted out by the ward, which is why you saw Ray Deer tumbling away from that bottom lane and they're heading back and actually going to take the golems away so keep that gold flowing while the lane was pushed up and you can see in terms of farm doing a very good job in that bottom lane Ray Deer keeping himself in there of course the fact that BRT has that kill though will keep him in there with the gold mm. he's now got the bloodthirster no boots on him so not as mobile as he'd like to be in that bottom lane we may see ganks coming there blue buffs going to be picked up by both lanes yeah that Caitlyn 
is really able to put a lot of hurt down onto Ray Deer here, and that was without his support. So getting the Bloodthirster is making him this immobile turret of damage, and then whatever poke they do get down on him, as long as he's able to continue proccing his headshots, is great for them. Assault and battery onto Rosie. There's going to be the Piltover following. There's not going to be enough damage to pick this one up, and Surti actually looking at turning that back around. Didn't hmm. be able, wasn't able to condemn him on the wall, though. I feel like he jumped the gun a little bit on that gank because if he was able to wait for Espeon, as soon as he lands that Assault and Battery, they could have put a Grasping Roots underneath and just chained a kill. But he went a little bit early, and it ends up just kind of burning the cooldowns. Now, Immunity's bottom lane is just trying to heal up. See, now, sooty has been looking for kills constantly, but he has fell behind in terms Low of CS. Farm. We see Alicia just off the side there. When you mentioned he is very well farmed, gets himself that red buff, and continuing to flow. Has just got himself that slight level advantage as well. Yeah, and also in this game, since it's been standard lanes and because there's been so much ganking, uh, the turrets have underwent very low amounts of pressure anyways. That was one maybe potential flaw we were talking about of Pain Gaming before this, as Alicia's gank just gets completely shut down by Zara, was how these teams may be over committing just for kills. And that may be what Sir T is doing right now, because they've had, he got the team the advantages in the lanes, but then, aside from the dragon they picked up right after a kill, hasn't really transitioned it into other objectives. Their lanes are still just kind of trying to farm away, and he's still just trying to gank over and over again, even though that may not be the best thing for him to be doing right now on Vi. Well, a long lane farming session coming out. 15 minutes gone in this game, a very tense one between the two teams that have so far not suffered a defeat here in the International Wildcard Tournament. We are seeing Pain Gaming slight with a 2,000 gold lead and equates to 3 to 1 kills. And we do see Surti again looking for kills. This time it's going to be Swiper in the top lane. Yeah, he's... Even though he's roamed around so much, he was ahead of Alicia in gold. Only because Alicia hasn't had any participation in any of these kills. Eventually, all that's going to be punishing him in there, but there's actually a flank going around the top lane. This seems like it's a kill. Lissandra is so squishy. And they're going to catch on towards Swiper. Assault battery is available. There it is. They managed to lock oh, him down. Timing. Timed up with unstoppable force. That will be a great kill for Venom. That was great because what Swiper was trying to do was get the Lissandra jump away, but you have to reactivate that ability, and there's a very small window. Since they used the Vi Ultimate on him during that, he couldn't get away once he threw it out. It allowed the Unstoppable Force a guaranteed combo, and it was a great kill pickup for Pain. Yeah, and he had his ulti and flash available, but he didn't use any of them. Didn't get a chance yeah. to. He was just knocked locked up, down. disrupted, completely locked down. That may be the first turret of the game in that top lane, and it's Pain Gaming that could be taking it away. It will get picked up. That's advantage Pain Gaming. That's going to stretch their gold lead to 4,000 now and that's what they need to do with more of these ganks that Surti is able to pull off is make sure he's ganking places where they can get objectives afterwards that one they knew Alicia is down here in a war so as soon as that gank works they're gonna get a turret because no one's gonna be able to go and cover that lane so as it stands heavens who was roaming looking for ganks all over the place right now is 40 CS behind Kami. Kami doing a fantastic job proving why wow. maybe he Death is the number already. one uh, in the world in terms of league championship points, I guess it is. LCP league points, league points whichever you'd like to call it. Nevertheless, Challenger like you league mentioned, points. the fact that he rushed that Death Cap out, didn't go for the Athenes, instead rushed that Death Cap out, he's going to have a lot of damage. And specifically, uh, he has a big shield which is the big thing right now. He would actually get a little bit more damage going magic penetration early, but the reason Samorianas don't care about that is because the shield is based off ability power, and since Swain's damage comes so slow, Kami can actually negate almost all of, say, one of the, the E's that Swain throws on him just by shielding himself. They're locking look on towards Kami, diving on the turret, and well, Heavens was not ready for that one. Swiper just piling in on that, and it seems that the communication is a little bit off right now for Immunity. They might be a little bit flustered. Think about it. They're down four kills to one. They've dominated in kills in most of their previous games here, and Pain has just been taking it to him for the most part, so there could be a little bit of communication flustering for these guys as they know they might be in danger of losing their first game. The pressure could well be on, but let's not rule out the fact that they do have that Vayne on their side. And great team fight too, if they can stay close in goal. Yeah, and Vayne has just been effectively unharassed. 147 to 155, just as Caitlyn starts falling away from her power phase. 
Could oh, be a this problem. could be the fight. He gets the stun. They he does get the stun, but he's gonna have to try and get away from this one. Assault and battery catches him out. He has to flash away from the strangle thoughts. He will get a kill, but it's gonna be an SPM, but he will go down. So a support for an AD carry, not a bad exchange for pain. Yeah, since pain gets to keep farming afterwards. I do think that was Ray Deer trying to kind of put the team on his back. Wow, look at that flash. Flash of the unstoppable force. Heaven's just getting out at the last moment. That came out of the bush as well. So we really did see that very late. Great reaction time. And this is what all the immunity players have been saying, like, this is what we're like when we have low ping. Since they all played so long on the North American servers was high ping and couldn't make plays like that, Heavens clearly has the reaction time to dodge Malphite. Doesn't matter, though, because he had to force, be forced back and Pain could get the dragon. So it's a turret for a dragon. Overall, a fair trade, I guess you could say, but effectively that is the second dragon for Pain Gaming. Mm -hmm. Gives that universal gold. Espion will benefit from that because he's got that Philo Stone and the Spirit Sight Stone in there already, so he's going to be happy. Let's have a look across the rest of the board, see what items are going to start coming out. Obviously, Play the Rune King versus Bloodthirst, so has been the AD carries. Yep. Zeal is being built up by Radio at the moment. He seems to be slightly ahead in terms of builds. I think that's mainly because BRT just hasn't been back to buy yet. Yeah, and he had 3,000 gold Oof, on yes, that last shot, by the way. Poof. Somebody's a little bit ahead right now because he was actually uh, about 800 gold ahead of his counterpart there in Raydare. And this is, this is a Caitlyn build I've seen from a few people. It doesn't necessarily shred people with auto attacks, but it definitely means his ultimate and his Piltover Peacemakers are exceptionally strong. And this fits right in with the strategy that Payne is trying to do right now. He's going to ult someone with Ace in the hole as Sir T is ulting him. They could lock down the Phenom or whatever other Orianna combos they want to go, and they'll get that kill at the start of the fight, which will hopefully for them transition into an easy 5v4. And Kami is completely the Athenes and Holy Grail as well, so he's it's looking very strong as well. At the moment, Payne as a team overall seem to be working well and mm -hmm. they're actually coordinating very well as well. The fact that Surti Venon have been working very well. Once you start adding Kami to the mix, they've already chained their CC very well. You chain the uh, Shockwave on top of that, that could mean trouble for Immunity. Especially if Immunity is not able to kind of get control and counter gank anything Surti is throwing at them. One negative thing for immunity right now is because so many of Sir T's ganks have been working that even if Alicia is there for a counter gank he's generally weaker than the Vi and it's going to backfire anyway so it's it's not like he doesn't see these ganks coming from for, from Sir T as he's already roaming down to the bottom it's that Vi is going to be able to answer flash crescendo on towards Espion but that's not really the target they should be going for Cataclysm comes in Rosie's teleport. getting away from it but there's a teleport coming in it actually gets tanked cancelled there we'd have to look at that one that's at the top there but Alicia is going to get focused Sir T is on him right now Piltover comes in that's BRT picking up one picking up two picking up three it's a triple kill for BRT the Counter-Strike Pro. Huge amounts of headshots there coming in for Caitlyn at the end of that fight. Five and oh now. This is real trouble for Immunity because they have the ability to take out another target and the last thing they need to bring their team comp together is that crazy farmed 80 carry that can take everyone else out. This is really good for Pain. So I'm interested to see whether Venom got interrupted by any way. I don't think Heavens actually has anything to interrupt the target. Uh, his W. There. His root. Right, of course. Oh, that, that would interrupt it. So he went straight up there, but he is pushing the tower. Can Heavens keep the pressure on this turret? He's doing a lot of damage to this turret every time he gets in there, and Venom's doing having a problem to try and deflect it, but look at that. The middle turret, the bottom turret, drop down. Pain Gaming now taking all of the eight of turrets down, and look at Kami. He's heading towards the top. Yeah, this has gotten bad kind of quickly for Immunity. This is now a 6,600 gold lead, and remember how uh, BRTT had 3,000 gold last time he went to shop. He had 2,300 this time. So, on the whole, he's, he's at 8,700 gold, but the craziest thing about this is, he doesn't even have the most gold on the team. It's actually Kami with 8,900. He has been farming up an absolute storm. 267, 22 minutes in, by the way. We were mentioning how Sir T spent so much time ganking, and how it was like, oh, maybe he's getting set behind and farm. Well, not really, because Kami was taking all of that farm for himself. Even at the Wolves there, you saw him take two of them over the top. That's how he's kept pace with there, and that's a big reason why Payne is working right now. And that could be a problem, because a fed Oriana can be a very, very dangerous thing. Hell, an underfarmed Oriana can be a dangerous thing, but a fed one, once that shockwave starts doing some serious damage, will wreck your team before you even get a chance. There's a gank being set up in this bottom lane, Jad. I'm not sure Ooh. it's going to work.
Well, at this point, there's no teleports that can stop it, and Vi is a little slow coming down. Immunity's putting all their all their eggs in one basket. eggs in one basket right here because they're four out of five people close to their whole team is down here, and if they don't win a three v four, it would be disaster. They're trying to be clever. Rosie's put that ward down, but doesn't realize it's on they top of a ping. Me. Now they see there's a see there's a ping ward there. Of course, Espion will clear that ward out. Meanwhile, Swiper's getting locked up in the mid lane. Cami hasn't really got much mana left, but is pressuring on towards that mid turret. They've got to create something in that bottom lane, or they're going to lose this turret. Thing is, they've already backed away in that bottom lane because they realized that Payne saw the gank coming, and basically Payne was doing a great job putting the rest of it together. And now they opt in for a three v three. They've died in on Espion, but again we see Radia getting caught out. Good crescendo to turn this back around. Alicia's taken down. They're going to turn their attention back towards Rosie. Radia tries to use the Condemn, gets Surti back away from him, but Surti comes flying straight back in there. We're going to see the claw of Ooh. Doom coming out from Swiper. Gets out, gets one. Can he turn it into a second? Yes, he gets the double kill. Surti's the next focus, but it's not going to work. Kami comes in. He gets himself a kill of his own. Teleport from Venom as well. There's three members pushing on the turret. Considering the lead, Payne had going into that that fight went substantially less than ideal but they're still going to be able to take a turret off of it after the teleport the big thing that happened there was brtt tunneled on people who weren't ray deer and ray deer got a substantial amount of damage down which led to the two kills that lissandra eventually came and picked up overall i think that was still a good play by pain but they have to kind of check themselves and make sure they're hitting the right targets in these team fights Interesting build continues from BRT. Goes for that static shift. Meanwhile, Phantom Dancer will be coming from Radier if he can get the gold. And the gold is the issue right now because Pain Gaming, they're taking their third dragon. Who well over 40,000 now. 41,000. The gold lead is continuing to grow. And this is the point that Immunity really had to avoid in this game, even though they have what I feel to be superior team fighting, they can't get to the team fights. They're getting roamed around on, and see, Swain can take on a bunch of people, but the rest of the team has to be there to help. Now they are slowly coming in, but it's just too little too late, and they back away, but he put a lot of damage down. See, Heavens wasn't involved in the last fight. That's the first time he does get involved, but he's on his own. He's been farming pretty well. He obviously hasn't been able to keep pace with Kami because Kami... I'm going to get that name right. What are you going with? Kami? Kami. Kami. We'll go with that. Come on, Jet. Kami has been farming up a storm. He's going to hit 300 here when he comes out of base. That's, that's a pretty good place. It's no frog in two, tw 22 minutes, but that was back in Season 2. This is still pretty good. He's no Spartan, though. He is a Brazilian. He is going to be laying down the damage. That was a bad one. <laughs> yep, you just let me hang in there. I like that one. That's nice. That's nice. He hasn't quite hit 300 yet, though, ironically. Uh, he will be getting it on the blue buff, though, so that will be working out in his favor. He has hit level 18. He's actually two levels over Heavens right now. So Heavens been off farming on his own, but Kami has managed to keep advantage. Two members pushing down the bottom. They've actually just passed the ward. Let's see whether Immunity try and take advantage of this one. Could they rush through the mid, or will they try and chase them, close them out on that red buff ward? Went on the red mm. buff from Pain, but instead they're reacting. They realize they may be leaving their middle lane open. Yeah, it's a really hard decision for Immunity to make right now, because on one hand, they want to get team fights with this team composition, so uh, Pain could like over focus Ray Deer, and then Heavens would be able to sit in a team fight with Swain and come back. But the dangerous thing for them to do in this one is force a fight now, because you don't want to force fights against teams that are substantially ahead of you until you've had time to catch up in the games. So they're kind of trapped between two decisions right now. Yeah, Immunity forced to back up there and having to leave their mid lane. Just Pain Gaming trying to play the positional advantage. Ward advantage is definitely in their favor. They have wards down this bottom, so they may try and keep on pushing. Of course, they've already taken that bottom inner turret, so mid turret or top lane will be their next focus, and they're just trying to create some sort of advantage, pick someone off from Immunity, make them separate. And Immunity, we haven't actually seen them in a five-man team fight yet. No, and that's kind of what they want. You can see they're waiting around this corner, mm. and if they get the right thing, uh-oh, the Oriana Ball saw them. Uh, talking about pain a little bit, though, they had a lead like this in their last game against Gaming Gear and then struggled to close it out a little bit. They are looking to have the right force, but they do not want to overcommit. But BRT, he's 7 1 0. Oh, that dear. extra BF sword in there. He's got so much damage, they've got mm -hmm. to try and lock him up early on. You can see that's what Alicia's doing, but Alicia's oh, no. getting focused. And look at that, Shredder oh. nearly dropped him. Of course, the red buff is still ticking. That's forced the mutiny away. They can't fight for this turret, they've got to back up. 
Yeah, BRGG is going to be a problem from here on out. <laughs> Able to take down the tank with a couple shots. There's no real armor on him right now. He's trying to build it up. He went so magic resist heavy to deal with the Oriana, who's just 322 farm at 28 minutes. There's a lot of problems right now for immunity. And that is a big creep wave that's going to have to get cleared out. Swiper's going to be able to get in there. They have to put everything in there. They can see the plan's coming straight down, trying to get those roots on towards Venom, but Venom just backs away from it. Pain, slowly but surely, working down this ways, but they don't have quite enough, quite enough to dive onto that turret just yet. Yeah, it's interesting because they have the tools to dive. They're just not deciding to pull the trigger because they're essentially getting what they want with no risk. As long as BRTT was able to take down Alicia with a couple of auto attacks and that effectively granted them two turrets, they're going to recognize right now that the top lane has been shoving. They're going to safely go up and take that. They're going to go shop and buy some items and just kind of take this slow because they know they have such a huge lead and there's no reason to throw it away with a dive even if that is what their composition is tailored for. Yet more wave clear for BRT. It's going to Take himself a giant stack of farm one with that static shift, but they may have left their mid lane open. Look at that immunity mm. trying to react to this one. They've got to be careful they don't push too deep though because pain are there and reacting. Once again though, there's no Swain. Heavens is spending a lot of time in the side lanes trying to farm up because Swain needs a huge amount of farm, but it may be making immunity too vulnerable to team fights. And even though they had that small window of pushing the mid lane, they weren't willing to fight even a 3v4 without Swain, so they decided to back away. Well, Payne are potentially going to engage on the blue buff. There's actually no one near this one to pick it up. So they've got to be careful. Payne are going to try and fight for this objective. They realize that Rosie is there. Rosie takes a good chunk of damage already from just Espion and BRT. Ace in the hole was burnt out there. Now it's going to be the blue buff. Can they steal this one? Elysia is going to have to use the smite if he wants to try and keep hold of this one. Instead, he's going to engage. Uh -oh. He jumps in. Cataclysm. Is that too little, too early, though? We see coming around the side, it is going to be Ray Deer. Didn't really find the target. BRT instead takes down Elysia. Now they're trying to dive in. Swiper has to use his ultimate. Try and catch on towards Swati, but it's see Assault and Battery on towards Ray Deer. Ray Deer just gets absolutely pincered he's gonna go down so t picks up a kill rose is the next focus venom's just gonna turn around throw out that shard he's gonna get slowed down and get dropped so t will pick that one up but venom comes in heavens does finally get around gets himself espion down cami went down as well but that was all about pain gaming it's a four for two it's a flash from heavens not gonna be enough venom comes back in to support him brt trying to snipe from range with that pilt over peacemaker heavens is just delaying the inevitable here he may be able to turn something on towards brt oh. Man. If Venon allows him, but instead he's look at this, he's, he's trying, trying to get around best. the bush. Not gonna happen. BRT is too clever for that one. The pills over from range, and there's the final kill. A delayed ace from Pain. Well, Venom earned that lad. I'd also like to welcome in everybody from the B stream. We just saw a crazy fight here where Immunity tried to initiate onto Pain Gaming, who by the way were very far ahead and still are. That fight in particular was scattered and chaotic, but we very clearly saw in this fight, we'll just get the replay right now. Watch how uh, Pain waits until Vayne shows to just have everyone jump in on him. Raider is sitting on the outside of this fight. Right now, Payne's actually not using any of their cooldowns. They both jump. They didn't even get the unstoppable force on the right target, but that's the type of focus that Payne is dealing with. And this is why, actually, Immunity wanted to force the team fights because as soon as Swain was let loose a little bit, the fight turned into a pretty close one. So Rosie actually landed a pretty good crescendo there. Did lock up two of them, but yeah. simply put, Radia was already being pincered, already out of the fight. It's going to be another dragon for Payne Gaming. They are looking very good here against Immunity, a team that's gone 2-0 already. Pain Gaming looking to end that spree here in the international wildcard tournament. That could sell set Pain Gaming towards that top of the table. Fourth dragon of the game, and it's all about BRT right now. 8-1-1 mm -hmm. one, one as the AD carry. You know, often we say when you have that many kills on one champion, it can be dangerous, but his positioning has been immaculate so far. Yeah, it can be dangerous, but not as dangerous if it's Caitlyn, one of the safest AD carries in the game. And really, having farm on him is the best thing that could happen to this composition. They have the ability to assassinate one guy really quickly, and then because BRTT is so farm, he can do what he wants. And the greatest thing for them is immunity doesn't necessarily have the potential to go and kill BRT, which is probably the biggest reason him being 8-1 is such a big problem.
but we saw it before. Ooh, wow, look at that Yikes. one simple combo on Alicia, the ace in the hole, will wow. land. He's got no hit points left. He can't be in this fight. Effectively, it's a 4v5 already, and you can see Swiper trying to catch him down. Venom has got an ultimate. Ooh, Vault Breaker coming out from 13, not really landing, having to force the flash away. It's strange because he had the choice of violating someone, but he didn't want to use it on Lissandra. He wants to save it very clearly for Ray Deer. I think they probably would have won that fight regardless because it was a 4v5, but that just shows you how much pain is sticking to their plan right now. And because they got the damage off, they're bursting down Baron so fast. So Baron down, and I'll tell you what, immunity are coming into this uh -oh. one blind. They're going too slow. Heavens is going to get locked up, uses the Zonia's Hourglass. Swiper, is he going to go? They're going to condemn. They're going to try and go for this one. Swiper gets down Espeon around the back. They're trying to focus BRT, but he's just got too much damage. Heavens gets dropped. Another Zonia's Hourglass. BRT is not going to care about that. He's the gonna get locked up. Way. Is it gonna be enough? No. Gets himself a double kill. There's another one going down, and that's gonna be Ray Deer getting dropped. Rosie, the last man standing. He's running for his life. And look at this. Pain Gaming gonna run straight down the mid and get themselves an inhibitor. This looks like it could be the end of the game here for Immunity. You could see Pain use their positioning very well in that fight. BRTT, he can deal with himself. He took out two people on the other end. And while BRTT was doing that, watch the initiation come from the other end here by gets it open down, not even onto Vayne, surprisingly, because they knew they could combo it with Oriana, and they just wrecked them. Fantastic shockwave, working wonders, but look at this. It's Pain Gaming from Brazil, ladies and gentlemen, that are going to take down the Australians' immunity. That will put them top of the league, 2-0, and zero, and they have looked unstoppable here against immunity. Immunity seems to be the team to beat, and, well, they just beat yeah. them. Well, <laughs> it's exactly a great way of putting it. Pain... I feel like they're warmed up now. Their game against Gaming Gear was a little shaky after their start, but they really knew how to close this one against Immunity. And this must give them so much confidence going into the rest of the day, but also into tomorrow, because they may have just beaten the top of their competition. Absolute fantastic stuff. So, Brazilian fans at home, you have halted the Shreya chance, I believe, of the Australian fans who will be up and watching this game. Of course, it's going to be getting late over in Australia, but their team, they are 2-1. They're not out of it yet. They are second in the league and looking good. And of course, that may even place the seeding. It would separate them from pain because remember, it would be first place seed versus fourth and yes. second versus third. Dark Passage, by the way, did pick up a win. That would be their first win for the Turkish team. So they're now 1-2 and two as well. Not too sure who they beat, whether it's Lion or... It would have been Lion. It was Lion, I believe, they played yeah. against. So that puts Lion...